Hello and welcome back to Logic Gates. In today's lesson, I introduce you to four new Logic Gates. Sound daunting? Don't worry, it's actually pretty laid back because they're all based on the three Logic Gates you're already familiar with. Without further ado, let us plunge right in. You are watching the Logic Gates web series on 0612 TV. I'm going to introduce you first to the NAND gate and the NOR gate. The first thing you realize about these gates are that you can't really figure out their functions from their names, mainly because their names are not strictly words with meaning. But that's alright, it's actually really simple. You see, you can break down the names like this. NAND is not N, and NOR is not OR. And in fact, that's exactly it. A NAND gate is basically an AND gate wired to a NOT gate. So the evaluation of the inputs is done in the exact same way as the AND gate does it, except you invert the result. The same premise goes for the NOR gate. So let's look at truth tables. Here's a truth table for an AND gate. What we're going to do now is to invert the output of the AND gate, and to do that, we'll create an extra column at the end of the truth table. Now if we were to get rid of the first output column and join the truth table back together, we've just transformed the truth table of an AND gate into the truth table of a NAND gate. The same thinking process applies to deriving the truth table of a NOR gate from that of an OR gate. Alright, now let's move on to symbols. That isn't very hard either. Here are the three symbols we've learned so far. A NOT gate, an AND gate, and an OR gate. Remember how NAND and NOR is like N and OR wired to a NOT gate. The symbolic representations reflect this. See this little circle at the end of the NOT gate? If I were to just put this at the end of the AND gate and OR gate symbols, I'll create the symbols for the NAND gate and NOR gate respectively. Well, it doesn't get more complicated than that. So we've covered two of the four gates for today, so let's go on to look at the other two. These are called XOR and XNOR respectively. We'll look at XOR first. XOR stands for Exclusive OR. As you can tell, this is based off the OR gate. In fact, to understand this better, we'll look at the general rule for the OR gate again. Remember that it says, if input A or input B is true, the output will be true. What this implies is that, if both inputs are true, the result is still true. This is where XOR differs from OR. You see, XOR will return an output of false if both inputs are true. This means that general rule for XOR will go something like, if input A or input B is true, but not both, the output will be true. Truth table wise, the XOR gate very much resembles that of an OR gate, except for the very last line, where the result becomes false instead of true. So far so good, let's now look at the XNOR gate. With the knowledge you've gained so far in this episode, you shouldn't have much trouble figuring out that XNOR is basically XOR wired to a NOT gate. So to obtain the truth table of an XNOR gate, you simply invert the outputs for an XOR gate. Alright, one last go at this and we're done. Let's look at symbols now. Remember how we transform OR gates into NOR gates by adding a circle at the end? That's about how you create an XOR gate from an OR gate, except you don't add a circle at the end, you add a little curved line behind the OR gate. Knowing that, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that the symbol for an XNOR gate is simply that of an XOR gate plus a little circle at the end. And there you have it, in just 4 lessons, we've covered all the 7 logic gates out there. In future lessons, we'll start looking at putting gates together, as well as some examples of practical applications. Thanks for watching Logic Gates on 0612 TV.